Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have now received the atonement. You can be seated this morning. I said I was reminded of a story. This story's been passed down from generation to generation and I believe there's been a, a singing group that turned it into a song and, and I've told it to our church before, but I feel like telling it again. There's a a homeless man years ago in England, he was marching up down the street looking for something to eat, and he heard in the back alleyway uh, some uh, cans rattling around in one of the uh, trash dumpsters there, and he went over there to inspect the noise that he heard, and he, uh, to his surprise, when he got there, he looked inside of that dumpster, and there was a young child, uh, uh, just maybe seven or eight years old. And... Uh, and it was cold, and it was windy, and it was just a dark, gloomy night. And that old man asked that young child, said, you want help, sir? And uh, that young boy said, yeah, I'm, I'm hungry. And uh, that man said, well, I've got a place that I can take you to. And uh, they went uh, down the road there together traveling. They came to this apartment where the lights was on. And he told that young man, he said, this is as far as I can take you, but I want you to go up there and knock on the door. And uh, when they answer the door, no matter what they ask you, just tell them John 3.16. Now we know this morning, if you don't, I'm going to tell you what John 3.16 says. The book of John chapter 3 verse 16 says, uh, for God so loved the world uh, yeah. that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Well, this older man told that little boy, he said, when, when you knock on the door and they come to the door, just tell them John 3, 16. When they take you in, whatever they ask, you just say John 3, 16. So the little boy walks up to the door and knocks on the door and a man comes to the door, opens it up, and that young boy says, John 3, 16. That man on the inside said, come on in. Are you hungry? That little boy said, John 3.16. And uh, that man sat him down at the table and they was a spread there and he ate till he was full. That older man uh, asked him, said, uh, are you, are you, you want a bath? And uh, that little boy said, John 3.16. So that older man took him in there, put him in the bath bathroom, left him there, cleaned him up, and that... That man said, you got any clothes other than the ones you come in here with? That little boy said, John 3, 16. And that man said, well, I can probably find you something here. And so he put him on some brand new pajamas. And that man said, would you like to stay here for the night? And I know it's cold outside. You want to stay here? That little boy said, John 3, 16. Yeah. And uh, that man took him in there to a nice, soft, warm, cozy bed and laid him down uh, and as that boy laid there looking out the window that night, he thought to himself, I've got all of this because of John 3.16. As we sit here this morning, everything that's been testified about and everything that's been sang about and all the benefits of our salvation, we've got it all because of John 3.16. This morning we sit here, those of us that are saved by the good grace of God. Uh, uh, we've been forgiven. Uh, uh, we've been reconciled to the Lord. Uh, uh, we've got Jesus in our hearts, a Bible in our lap, a reason to smile this morning, all because of the love uh, uh, that God had for you and I. And now as we come to our text this morning in Romans chapter 5, uh, I want to preach for just a moment on all of this uh, just for us. And I'm thankful to be saved. And I'm like Brother Ethan, I'm thankful. Uh, when I got saved, I didn't want to go to hell. I, uh, when I got saved, I didn't realize how good salvation was uh, until after I got saved. Uh, uh, Brother Bill, I got saved simply because the Lord revealed to me uh, that if I was to die, I would lift my eyes up in a devil's hell. Amen. If we've been honest about it this morning, that's the reason you got saved. And if you're here this morning and you're lost and you've never been saved, uh, uh, you'll get saved because you realize that without him, 
you'll die lost and go to hell. And uh, we talk about heaven being eternal, uh, 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 being eternal. Hell's going to be just as long. Now, I mean, strictly speaking, there's going to be a little time of reprieve for those in hell because the Bible says there's going to come a day when the dead in hell, they're going to be judged. They'll be called up out of hell. They'll stand before the Lord in judgment. Then they'll be cast into a lake of fire. But I want to look this morning at, these, at this passage of Scripture and preach on all this just for us. First of all, in order for us to understand the benefits of being saved, you've got to understand man's hopeless condition prior to, to being saved. And I've heard it said uh, that uh, people, they were born a Christian. Ain't nobody ever been born a Christian. Ain't nobody ever, ever been born saved. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I want you to notice man's hopeless condition. Paul begins to speak about this. The Bible says, for when we were yet without strength in due time Christ died for the ungodly. First of all, as it relates to man's hopeless condition, man is weak. The Bible says in verse number six that... Uh, that gives the phrase oh, without strength. That carries the idea of being powerless um, or utterly helpless with no means of escape. Um, if you're saved this morning, you ain't always been that way. There was a time um, uh, when you were hopeless and uh, helpless. Um, uh, nobody has ever been able to obtain salvation uh, uh, within their own merit. Uh, uh, there's none of us ever been good enough to, uh, to obtain salvation. We've never lived righteously enough. And, uh, nobody can ever earn their salvation. You can't work for your salvation uh, uh, because in our own flesh, we don't have the ability because man uh, is weakened uh, by sin. Amen. So this morning, if you're here and you've never been saved or if you think you're saved because of something you've done, friend, you ain't saved by what you've done. You get saved by what he did on the cross of Calvary. And uh, I understand there'll be some that would like to split hairs and say, well, I got saved when I prayed. Well, that's part, probably part of it. Uh, the Bible says, with a heart man believeth unto right, with mouth confession is made unto salvation. We understand this morning that the day that I got saved, I, I knelt down and asked the Lord. I, I, I prayed three words and it changed my life for all of eternity. I said, Lord, save me. And he did. Because I realized I was weak. Without him, I was unable. Not only that, but verse number six, it also tells us that man is wicked. Not only is man weak, but man is wicked. The Bible says, for God, for Christ died for the ungodly. That word ungodly refers to those who without reverence for who have who have no reverence or fear of God. In other words, when Christ died for the ungodly, he died for those that were living their lives as if God did not even exist. Uh, there are those uh, that think more highly of themselves than they all. There are those that believe that for whatever reason they've been good enough uh, uh, to be forgiven in the eyes of God. But, uh, but if you read uh, the entire chapter 5 of the book of Romans, you'll You'll find that we're sinners uh, uh, by nature. We inherited a nature from Adam. Uh, all of us can trace our roots back to Adam. When Adam fell in the Garden of Eden, the Bible says, for as by one man sin entered into the uh, earth and, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, uh, uh, for that all had sinned, even over those that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. In other words, uh, uh, the reason we sin, sin is just the fruit of our nature. Man is not only weak in his inability to save himself, but man is wicked in the nature that he possesses. And there ain't one of us in here this morning who don't possess that nature. All of us are ungodly. I've done quoted it once, but I'll quote it again. Romans, I believe 3.23 says, For all have sinned 
come short of the glory of God. Uh, there, let me go ahead and say this. I know we're not giving an invitation yet, but there's no shame in being lost. Because if you've ever been saved, there's been a time when you was lost. When you wasn't saved, then you was ungodly and the fruit of that nature uh, prevailed over you and and uh, you you are aliens from the commonwealth. Uh, you are enemies to God. I mean, we've all been there. The shame is staying there when you can get out of it. Man is weak, man's wicked, man is wayward. Notice what the Bible says, verse number 8, but God commended his love toward us and that was yet sinners. Sinners. A lot of times we don't, we, we use that word so much around church, we forget what it means. Sinners, that word literally means to miss the mark. Sin means to miss the mark. The mark is in the Old Testament, the law of God. And every one of us has failed. People say, well, the Ten Commandments. Well, that's, that's just ten. That's a ten-point outline of the entirety of the, the law, if you will. Yeah. Every one of us. And the Bible says if you, if you failed in one, you're guilty of all. Mama. All of us have failed. We're wayward. We're sinners. You're a sinner this morning. It carries the idea. This word sinner, it carries the idea of the archer aiming at his target, the bullseye, the center of his target, and missing the target completely. It's where we were. It's where, it's where we were before we got saved. Man's wayward. Man, I, <clears throat> man is warlike. You say, what in the world are you talking about, preacher? Verse number 10. For if when we were enemies, enemies means an adversary. Basically what the Bible's telling us that when we were lost, we were on the devil's side. We, are, we, were, we were opposed to God. We're an enemy to God. And so man is hopeless in his condition. But I'm thankful, number two, we see also in this text his exceeding, the, the, the Christ's boundless love and compassion toward us. Yeah. Not only do we see man's hopeless condition, boy, if I were to stop right there, it'd be an awfully bad message. It'd be, I mean, it'd leave us without any hope. But, but the reality of it is, you and I, there was a point in our lives where we were hopeless and was helpless outside of the grace of God, but then Christ had compassion on us. I want you to notice some things about the compassion of Christ in this text. First of all, His compassion exceeded the love of man. This morning, how many of us, now you don't have to raise your hand because I can look around, but how many of us, we have children this morning? You got kids. And I think about my dad this morning. I thank, thank God my are here, but, but my dad this morning, I don't believe that there's any one of his kids, me, Keely, or Peyton, either one, that he would give in exchange for somebody else's life. Don't believe my dad would do that for a second, and I don't believe you would either. I mean, Brother, brother Bill's got a lot of his family here, and Brother Ron's got a lot of his family here, and others have their families here, but Brother Bill, I don't believe you'd give Brother Billy in exchange for anybody's life in here. But the love of God exceeded that of the love of man. I want you to notice Paul tells us here that there's a few people in life that men might die for. He says this in verse 6 and verse 7. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God the Father gave His only begotten Son in exchange for our lives. That exceeded the love of man. That is the love that our human minds cannot comprehend this morning. That's the love that you and I, we have a hard time fathoming. That's the love that you and I have a hard time relating to. That's the love, though, that it took to save man from his sin. His compassion exceeded the love of man. Not only that, his compassion exhibited the love of God. 
I can understand God loving good people. And you can too. But the Bible tells us this, that he, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. His compassion exhibited so many times people come to church. And, they, and I believe the Bible does say this, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Oh, yes. I believe we ought to have a reverential fear of God. I believe, I believe that uh, uh, the fear of the Lord is a good thing. But let me say this to you, friend, this morning. If you're not saved, God is not seated upon His throne uh, with a rod in his hand looking for every way in the world that to get at you. Because that's the picture a lot of times the devil tries to paint. But can I say this morning, God loves you. God wants to save you more than you want to be saved. God wants to save you so much that he gave his only son so that you could be saved. And the devil will try to tell you things like, well, you've been too bad. God don't love you. God won't save you. God don't, doesn't care about you. That's the lies that the devil will try to place in your mind to keep you from getting saved. But let me say this morning, God loves you. You say, preacher, you don't know what I've done. I don't have to know what you've done. All I've got to know is what he did. I don't have to know what you've done. You don't have to tell me your life story. You don't have to tell me. You don't even have to tell God because God already knows. The eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the good and the evil. There's nothing that you've got to buy on the Lord. He knows everything. He knows the secret things you've done. He knows the things you've done that nobody else knows about. He sees when nobody else is looking. And I want to say this morning, he's, He still loves you. Yeah. And He still wants to save you. Yeah. He wants to change your life. He wants to write your name down in the Lamb's book of life. He wants to give you eternal salvation. We see His compassion exhibited the love of God. Christ's compassion. Remember when He was on the cross... Brother Bill, there's, there hangs Jesus between the heavens and the earth. And the very people that were crucifying him, he looks out over that crowd and he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. If, if Christ can look over the very crowd that has mocked and ridiculed and beat him and battered him and, and caused him to bleed, then I'm pretty sure he can forgive you and he loves you this morning. So we see man's hopeless condition. We see Christ's boundless compassion. And lastly, and I'm done, our matchless completion. Boy, I'm glad this morning salvation is complete in Jesus. Amen. I'm glad, listen, if you're, tr I say this a lot around the church, but if you're visiting, this is probably the first time you've ever heard me say this, if you're visiting this morning, I'm not trying to go to heaven. No. No. I'm not hoping to go to heaven. And you say, well, now hold on just a minute. Call time out. The Bible says we have hope in God. Yes, but that hope is a sure hope. That means I know, listen, I'm not working to go to heaven. I, I, I don't come to church to try to go to heaven. I, I didn't get baptized to go to heaven. I got baptized so that I could vote when we have a vote at church. Come on. Amen. Come on now, you know that. Baptism ain't going to save you. I could, well, listen, ever pass, pastors could dip you in every hole between here and California, and that still ain't going to make you right with God. Uh, that just gets your name put on the church roll so that when, when election time rolls around, you can have something. You'll have a right to vote. But it doesn't make you right with God. What makes you right with God is that you're, you've been born again. Amen. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, ye must be born 
again. And when I got born again, salvation at that point, it was complete. The Bible says this, those he called, he justified, those he justified, he sanctified, those he sanctified, he glorified. I don't have time to run through all this, and, and but but I'm going to say this: I'm as as good as in heaven yeah. as if I was already there. Amen. 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 According to the Bible, that's not that's not uh, Loganology. That's that's not my opinion. According to the Scripture, I am trying to catch up to where I'm already at in the mind of God. Yeah. Boy, ain't that amazing this morning? That's how saved you and I are. And then when you get saved, the Bible says you're sealed under the day of redemption. But I want you to notice this, our, our matchless completion. I want you to notice in verse number 9, the Bible says, much more being now justified by his blood. That word justified, it means that you've been declared not guilty. That's our position in Christ. If you've been saved this morning, you are no longer held accountable to the charges that was against you. Because you want to know why? He took the handwriting of ordinances that was against us and contrary to us and nailed it to his cross. In other words, what you say, preacher, what do you mean? You remember when they crucified the Lord and they put up over his cross there, King of the Jews? That was his charge that was laid against him. And they nailed it to his cross. You know, what, you know what Christ did while he's on the cross? He took every charge that was ever laid against you and I and he nailed it to his cross. He bore our sins so that when you and I place our faith in him to the saving of our soul, we are declared justified in the sight of God. It's as though I have never sinned. Yeah. Boy, ain't that good? That's a, that's, a good that's a good position to be in. Being declared, even though we are guilty, when God sees me, he has to look through the blood of his son. And it's as though I've never sinned. Not only do we see our position, but I see in verse number 9, our protection will be saved from wrath. Now salvation is a present possession. Salvation is something we possess right now. Those of us that are saved, we're not waiting to obtain salvation, but, but we are saved. But I'm thankful on the day of judgment. On the day of judgment. Though it ain't going to be enjoyable, Brother Bill, because I'm going to give an account for the deeds done to this body, whether they be good or whether they be bad. Yeah. I'm going to give an account. But I won't have to worry about the wrath of God because we've been saved from that wrath. And I know, listen, we don't have time to go through all this either, but there's going to come a day when God's going to pour His wrath out on this world and judge this world. But I'm thankful I'm going to be delivered from that time of judgment. That's our protection. Boy, all this just for us. Our peace that we have. Verse number 10, for if we were enemies, we were reconciled. We don't establish the fact that we were enemies to God but we've been reconciled to God and that puts us at peace with God. Yeah. Now listen, friend, this morning you say, Preacher, if I get saved, is my life going to be a bed of roses? Absolutely not. No. I don't care what they say on TBN and all them other televangelists. They try to tell you that you get saved and everything's going to be perfect. It's not. Uh, uh, there's still going to be battles. There's still going to be trials. There's still going to be troubles and tribulations. There's going to be problems. There's going to be uh, temptations. But what we do have is, is the peace with God. Amen. I'm thankful that I'm at peace with God. I don't, I don't live every day with the peace of God in my life. That's a, that's a thing I've got to work for on a daily basis. But I am thankful I've made peace with God. I've been reconciled with God. And so we have peace. We're no longer in opposition to God. And God's no longer in opposition to us. We're on His side and He's on ours. If you've been saved. Come on. Lastly, our preservation. Our preservation. Verse number 10, the Bible says this. For if we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. 
This has nothing to do with the life that he lived on earth, but it has everything to do with the life that he's living now. I'm thankful we're not serving a dead Savior. I'm glad we're not living for a dead God. I'm glad he's alive and well, and our Savior is seated at the right hand of the throne of God, and he is our advocate. Amen. You know what an advocate does? How many of you all that are saved realize that soon after you got saved that you still had to, had a sin nature about you that you had to bring in subjection. Yeah. Every one of us. It doesn't matter how saved you are, you still are going to mess up. Amen. You still, Paul, the great apostle Paul said, and I quote this a lot, he said, the things I want to do, I don't do, and the things I don't want to do, I do. Now listen, we don't preach a license to sin. Now, uh, be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. We understand, listen, you ain't going to get anything over on God. Uh, uh, God, he, he, he will deal with your sin. As a father deals with a child. But I tell you what he does. We've got an advocate. I'm going to tell this story. I've told it before. My dad one day, and since he's here, he'll get a kick out of this. I had a little old shovel about this long. had a sharp spade style head on it, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, and right outside the front door, the place we lived out whenever I was young, there was a, there was a bush there. And I was bored. I mean, I'm talking, Brother Bill, I was, I was bored. There wasn't nobody to play with. I, was just, I had that shovel. And for whatever reason, I just went to hacking away on that bush with that shovel. I mean, I was beating that thing as hard as I could beat it. And then about that time, Dad flung the door open. Walked outside and said, What in the world are you doing to my bush? Well, real quick, like I realized I was in trouble. I'm, I'm talking about how an advocate does. I, I had an advocate that day. I turned around and said, I told Dad, I said, well, I'm just beating around the bush. <laughs> and about that, about that time, he, he was going to get mad at me because I was tearing our bush up, but then he, he got to laughing and realized he couldn't get mad at me because he's laughing about what I said. Now, listen, I know that's a, probably a poor illustration of an, of an advocate with Father, but when we, after you get saved, when you mess up and you sin, Jesus looks over at God the Father and says, Look here, it's one of mine. He's been saved. And uh, we're going to give him, we're going to exercise grace. And you're going to do it because of me. That's what, that's what Jesus does. We have an advocate with the Father, somebody that, that intercedes for us. We also have an intercessor. An intercessor. Christ Jesus is praying to God for us on our behalf. We have somebody that intercedes for us. Then we have the praise. We joy in God. Verse number 11, not only so, we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. There's been some of that taking place this morning. People, I, I, I'm a firm believer. If you want to go to a dead, dry church where they don't, I mean, you hear a gnat burp in the back pew, I mean, that's fine. That's, that's between you and the Lord. But I'm for going to church where people actually seem like they love God and enjoy being there. I, I mean, listen, I, I preach it to our people all the time that, uh, that we don't all worship the same way. We, we ain't all gonna run. We ain't all gonna shout. We ain't all, uh, and you don't have to, but I believe, listen, we uh, uh, that are saved ought to rejoice in the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. I mean, I'm for at least coming in and smiling. Amen. amen. I've been in some places where you couldn't get a smile and amen out of nobody, and I wondered if they even liked the fact that they were saved. But we have, we joy in God. And then our privilege, we've been given the atonement. Now I want these young fellas to come back up here and get that song that y'all sang, the second one. And uh, we're going to, uh, the room for one more, that's the one. But uh, we have the privilege of receiving the atonement. This, this phrase, received the atonement, means that we're one with God. Think of this. Oh, lost, hell bound, hell deserving sinners that we are have been forgiven this morning. All this just for us. 
We, we have, look, looking back, we, we were in a hopeless and helpless situation. But the compassion of Christ brought us out of that. And He gave us a salvation that is complete in the Lord. And I don't know your heart this morning. And if I'm being honest about it and we being real, the only person that I know is saved in this building is me. Salvation is a personal thing between you and the Lord. But I tell you how you get saved. The Bible says, For by grace, through faith, are you saved. In that, not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. You've got to exercise faith in Jesus Christ. Believe in the finished work of the cross of Calvary. If you're here this morning and you've never been saved as we stand, I'm going to have them sing this song. There's room for you. There's room for you. If you need to be saved this morning, I invite you to come. You say, Preacher, I'm here this morning. I know I'm saved, but I ain't right with God. This will be a good morning to get right with the Lord. Say, Preacher, I'm saved. I know I'm saved, but I ain't been living the way that I should. Now is your time. Slide out of your pew. There's a God in heaven that loves you too. And will forgive you. He said, the Bible says He's faithful. If we'll confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteous. Y'all fellas, come on and sing for us. If you need to pray, I invite you to come and pray. They've been there for some now. Eternity has no end. They've rejected the love of Jesus, and they died and lost in you their need to pray. Sin. Now's your time to come. The flames will never go down, and the pain won't go. It was made for the devil and his angels. Oh, what an awful place. Their sins were all paid for. Why did they have to go? Forever, and there's always room for one more. There's always room for one more. They've been there for some time now, and the praise is had. Cause they've trusted the blood of God's only Son To wash away their sin Their heartache and pain are all over All tears are wiped Forever in the presence of the Savior. Oh, what a wonderful place. Their sins are all forgiven. Washed in Calvary. 
you need to pray. last forever. And there's always room. You might be here this morning. One more. And it's been a while since you just thanked the there's Lord. Always for being saved. You can do that this morning. You may be here this morning and your life's out of kilter with God. I wouldn't leave this building had not done, done business with the Lord. I wouldn't leave this morning lost. And, and, I, and I'm careful when I say things like this because I don't want to scare. People say scare, but, but hell is a scary thing. There's just no other way to split it. There's no other I'm not going to come to you today and and drag you to this altar. I'm not going to say nothing to you, but, but I am going to give you what the Bible says. The Bible says this, Hell is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. That's what the Bible said in the book of Isaiah. Hell enlarges its borders every day. I never read in the Bible where heaven's ever had to get any bigger. That's right. But I do read in, in the Bible where hell has to get bigger. Hell's a real place where real people go when they die lost without God. And you say, well, this morning I, I believe I've got many years ahead of me. That's what a lot of people thought. A lot of people think that because they're young and the older I get, they realize, I realize that 30 is still young. But this morning... If, if you're here, this may be the last time. This may be your last opportunity. They was, people went to bed last night with plans they didn't meet this morning. There's people making plans this morning and they're not going to get to fulfill them this evening because death is no respecter of persons. This young man, and I'm not telling his testimony, I wouldn't say nothing to work, but it, he, he come to me just honest. said, Preacher, I've been saved, but, but I just ain't been living right. I've been away from the Lord. Man, that's a good thing. Yeah. And he done the right thing. Amen. If only we could get honest like that. Those of us that have been going to church for a long time, if we could, ever, it, get, if we could ever get to a place where we'd right. just be honest with the Lord and say, man, I'm just going through the motions. Yes. I mean, I'm showing up to church Tell on it, Sunday preacher. morning and I, I'm showing back up on Sunday night, but there's really no connection. I mean, service really ain't changing me and I, I'm not where the Lord wants me to be. He done all that, what I preached about this morning, just for us. All he asks out of us is present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and simple unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's right. If you need to pray this morning, I want them to sing one more verse of that song, and then we're going to close. But if you're lost, I wouldn't leave here this morning without getting saved. And if you ain't right with God, I wouldn't leave here this morning without getting right with the Lord. And if you are saved and you just ain't been thankful for it, I wouldn't leave here this morning without telling God you, you appreciate Him sure. and you love Him. Go ahead. They've been there for some time now And the praises have no end Church, that's where we're going. they've trusted the blood of God's only Son To wash away their sin Heartache and pain are all over. All tears are wiped away. Forever in the presence of the Savior. Oh, what a wonderful place. Their sins are all forgiven, washed in Calvary's flow. Heaven will last forever, and there's always room for one more. There's always room for one more. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Well, I appreciate the Lord this morning. I appreciate your faithfulness. Appreciate your attention, and uh, and I'm gonna put. I, I, I'm I'm pretty straightforward. I just say things, and normally service don't go this long on Sunday mornings, but uh, but I'm thankful. I'm thankful for every person that come this way. I'm thankful for all of our guests this morning. I'd appreciate uh, you being here. And uh, we hope that you've enjoyed the service. We hope that nothing that I've said or done or anything else, just that the Lord blessed you. And we want you to come back and be with us again. We didn't do this just to try to have a big number, but we did this so that you would know you're welcome at Solway Baptist Church and you're wanted here. And uh, we're going to do everything we can to just uh, try to preach the Bible and make much of Jesus. Thank you.